All right, next game. This is the early. This is the late afternoon slate. Now, uh, the the Raiders at the Chargers. This line open of Chargers minus three. It's down to one and a half. It's actually one at Bookmaker. Uh, so, who do you like in this game? So, I was torn on this one at first. Um, I'm gonna end up being on the Chargers because I do think that they have a very good team. But my goodness, is it hard to watch them play late games? They it's just <laughs> devastating every single time. It's like, all right, it's a one possession game. Oh, the Chargers have a late lead. They're gonna pull it off, blow the lead every time. It's like clockwork. I don't understand it because they actually have they have pretty good talent on, especially on offense and defense. They have good personnel, but uh, they've rarely all been healthy together. So. I mean, they're just so frustrating to watch. And I, I like Anthony Lynn as a coach, but c- come on, figure figure this stuff out late. It's it's so it's so painful. Like I feel bad for them. But um I, I just think that the Raiders defense isn't isn't that great. Uh they benefited last week by playing the Browns without Odell Beckham Jr. in like horrible weather conditions. Like if you guys all saw the Daniel Carlson kick in that game that started completely on target, then a massive wind gust blew it all the way across. Um, I think that I think that is indicative of the weather that they put up in that one. Um, I think this is going to be an offensive battle with teams going blow for blow. Um, I think Justin Herbert's playing better right now. And I do think Derek Carr and the Raiders offense are going to move the ball um, plenty. But at some point, the Chargers have to win a close game. It just <laughs> It has to happen. And Justin Herbert's been playing so well that I, I do think it's going to happen this time around. So I'm going to be on the Chargers here. Uh, I'm not going to be super confident in it until they give me a reason to be, but um, I think I'm going to have a unit on them. Uh, but they, this one was close. Like, you could have convinced me on the Raiders, but I just think I like the Chargers um, and their uh, ability on offense a little bit better. Yeah, I like the Chargers too. I like them more than you do. Um, and really, I guess it depends on the offensive line, uh, the status of it, because, you know, Brian Bulaga finally returned last week. And uh, considering that the Chargers were going against a, a very good Denver defense, I thought, you know, Bula- having Bulaga on the field is key for that. Now, Trey Turner is the only question mark, and it sounds like he was close last week, so he might return this week. So if they get tr- if they get Turner and Bulaga back, they're only down one offensive lineman, that center Mike Pouncey, who's who's out for the year. But, um, you know, ha- having four offensive linemen on the field is going to be so key, especially against a Raider team that that doesn't really pressure uh, the quarterback that that well. So um, And the Raiders don't cover. So I, I, I think that the Chargers should have, um, you know, all the success in the world uh, just passing – on the Raiders. Uh, so, and, and given that, um, you know, the advanced spread on this game was chargers minus three, uh, you know, it dropped a, a point and a half or maybe even two points, depending on uh, which sports book you're looking at uh, just because uh, you know, the chargers lost to the Broncos who I, I thought, you know, I thought that was kind of an even game. And then the, the Raiders beat the Browns where Jarvis Landry dropped three touchdowns. Uh, or I guess like two touchdowns, maybe uh, close to three. Um, I don't think the line should have moved two points because of that. I, I just think the Chargers are undervalued here. And even the computer model thinks that line should be five. So that, that gives me a lot of confidence in the Chargers. So I'm going to be betting them. The unit count depends on how many offensive line than they have uh, back from injury. Okay, you may be more confident in this pick then, so I may b- put more units on it. The return of Bulag was definitely huge. I, I mean, Justin Herbert was playing well without – that entire right side of the offensive line. So imagine what he'll be able to do when Trey Turner's back in there because Turner's a perennial Pro Bowl candidate. So I'm just excited to see where he goes from here. But uh, I've loved what I've seen so far, um, really from him and Burrow. And, you know, we'll get into Tua in a little bit. But uh, I, I still think that there's some talent there too. Yeah, you know what's amazing about Turner? You mentioned that he's a perennial Pro Bowl or like – he, his return is is not really going to move the line because the public is going to be like, oh, who's that? Like, it doesn't matter. So, like, that's such a big advantage, uh, like, knowing that. And, and so, like, yeah, that, that's why I always say that the Saturday updates uh, are so important because that's when uh, we know uh, what the, the final practice report is and what the injury updates are. Like, you don't have all the information, but, you know, if, if Turner practices fully, like, at least once, and it's like, okay, the, we're going to – I'm going to lock in the Chargers for a, a pretty big bet. Makes sense.